What's up, humans, and welcome to a new Psicoactivo. Happy Friday, everybody. If you're going out, don't drink and drive. Have fun. Uh, go take an Uber or something. Um, but yeah, please have fun on a Friday night. It's always really good. I do have some news, breaking news, and it is not what you guys think. It's not the same thing. Although Dr. Beatriz Villarroel, who is from Sweden, she's an astronomer who has been working on, as I understand it, several papers and a preprint of one of those papers just came out today. I am going to share with you guys uh, an Instagram post that Mr. Dennis Asberg just shared that is actually from Clint Weldon's The Night Shift, which I thought was really cool. So I'm going to share it with you guys. And then we're going to talk about today's paper uh, because it's it kind of connects with UFOs and nuclear weapons. So this one is, seems to be really big. Well, let's play this first, yeah? My name is Beatrice Villarreal, and I'm a very curious person. I'm also an astronomer with a PhD. About 20% of every star similar to our sun has a planet similar in size to the Earth, orbiting the star within the habitable zone where liquid water can exist. There are 40 billion Earth-sized planets just inside our own Milky Way galaxy. There are all reasons to believe that our galaxy is full of life. Now we humans can send a spaceship on our interstellar travel. And we can send exploratory spacecraft, so-called probes. The probe can carry a message. It can carry cameras, communication systems, lasers, everything needed to communicate back to its creator. Voyager 1 was a NASA space probe launched in 1977. It entered interstellar space in 2012. But in the future, we might be smaller and faster probes, traveling maybe at a fraction of the speed of light. Now, if we can send a probe to another system, can an advanced civilization send a probe to our solar system? Our galaxy might be full of billions of probes on adventure. Even small artificial objects can be tracked by a telescope on the Earth, either by astronomers or the military. This gives us a direct method to search for ET probes. We just need to look for fast flashes of light. Now, my team, the Vasco team, wants to search for fast flashes from alien probes. And we want to use both old images as well as survey the sky with an entirely new instrumentation that we have designed. We don't need one billion dollar missions or telescopes. We don't need to create difficult, challenging projects with thousands of people. And we certainly do not need for Pentagon to release any of their secret reports. They can keep the classified data. All we need is to look up the sky and search for things that flash. That's pretty wild, right? Uh, kudos to Clint because um, this was shared by Dennis and Clint did a wonderful video. I'm going to leave it in the description. Uh, but this is what some of this paper is actually about. And I'm just going to show you this too. This is a publication from Dennis himself who said, this report that was just presented today, uh, it's a preprint. Uh, he said, this report is not the one you're waiting for now because that report will come next week. So the one that he teased on his video that he actually took down already, it's coming next week. And that report, it's so incredibly much more. But here you get a little foretaste of what's to come. Some transients in the Palomar Observatory Sky Survey, POSS-I, or one, may be associated with above ground nuclear testing and reports of unidentified anomalous phenomena. So this is pretty significant. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Dennis. I hope I can have him on the show sometime soon because of that video that he made and other things that he may uh, want to talk about. Uh, that circumvent the actual discovery because he's not going to steal Dr. Villarreal's thunder. She's the one who made it. 
but I do want to talk to him about the ontological shock that he went through and what their, that experience has been like. And I just want to let him know that he's not alone. He had to take down the video because of so much vitriol and insults that he suffered. So that's unfortunate. But that's a natural reaction from people uh, against the unknown. And that is something that we are having to deal with in this space. So I'm sorry that happened to you. It happens to a lot of people that are trying to search for truth. So hang in there, man. What I do want to share with you guys is first the tweet from Dr. Villarreal, which is pretty significant. So here it is. She says, happy to share a new preprint by Steve Brule and me. We investigate whether pre-Sputnik transients statistically correlate with atomic bomb tests and historical UFO sightings. The answer, yes to both. And she just left a little PS there. Same thing that Dennis said. This is not the study you're all wondering about. So the key points is that uh, these transients were 45% more likely to appear within a one plus or minus day of above ground nuclear tests. Uh, dates with UAP reports saw an 8.5% spike in transient activity. The strongest anomaly when nuclear tests and UAP reports overlapped before Sputnik even left the ground. And the data suggests that something extraordinary might be happening. Anomalous objects appearing in Earth's orbit years before humanity put anything into space. And then also, this uncovers ties between mysterious star-like transients between 1949 and 1957, which is when a lot of those uh, atomic bomb tests were taking place. So this is pretty significant. Uh, talking to my friend uh, Johnny Mayer, he actually tells me that they established a strong correlation between transients and nuke testing uh, by one of three countries statistically validating the claims by Robert Hastings, the author of UFOs and Nukes, and others of UAP sightings around above ground nuke tests. Um, this also includes anecdotal uh, evidence. They also found an association between increased UAP sightings on nuke test days as well. This is when Dr. Villarroel was first starting the Basco project, which is the project with which she's doing all of these new discoveries. This is with uh, one of her partners in the project. His name is Christian Pilkmans. Um, he helped construct the Citizen Science Project. I like this picture, though. This one is really cool. Let's look at the uh, first initial writing. It says, some transients in the Palomar Observatory Sky Survey may be associated with above ground nuclear testing and reports of unidentified anomalous phenomena. Abstract, transient star-like objects of unknown origin have been identified in the first Palomar Observatory Sky Survey, conducted prior to the first artificial satellite, meaning Sputnik. We tested speculative hypotheses that some transients are related to nuclear weapons testing or unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP reports a data set comprising daily data from November 19, 1949 to April 28, 1957, regarding identified transients, nuclear testing, and UAP reports was created. Results reveal significant associations between nuclear testing and observed transients, with transients 45% more likely to, on dates within one day before or after uh, the nuclear testing. Significant associations were also noted between total number of transients and total independent UAP reports per date, with the largest association observed for dates of which at least one transient was identified. For every additional UAP reported on a given date, there was an 8.5% increase in number of transients identified. Small but significant associations between nuclear testing and number of UAP reports were also noted. Findings suggest associations beyond chance between occurrence of transients in both nuclear testing and UAP reports. These findings may help elucidate the nature of, of POSS transients and strengthen empirical support for the UAP phenomenon. And 
this is like a graph that I saw that I thought was really interesting. You guys can take a screenshot if you like. So that's essentially what happened. The really key data point was that 107,000 transients were observed from Palomar Observatory. And this is significant for one specific reason, because they were able to identify all of these correlations by observing plates from only a very limited patch of the sky from the Palomar Observatory. That's incredible. It must mean that they're coming in in droves. If only one little patch detected that many hits, that's unheard of. And it's history in the making, if you ask me. They also found statistical correlation between sightings reported and transients as well. This supports the theory that transients on film plates may indeed be UAPs and not so other prosaic occurrence as has been suggested. Not definitive proof, but a strong association proof that what is being seen as transients could be indeed UAP. So this is pretty big too. And the, the really funny part that Johnny pointed out is that uh, Dr. Villarroel is not claiming that these transients observed are, are UAPs. But if you read between the lines of the uh, preprint, that's one of the better conclusions that can be reached. And this goes uh, credit goes straight to Johnny because he he was well, one of the first who pointed this out to me even before I saw Dr. Villarreal's tweet. So shout out to Johnny. So this is pretty huge in terms of supporting the data that uh, Robert Hastings already released. And it just keeps, uh, it just remains with the question, why are UAP so attracted to nuclear energy? This kind of data is really hard to debunk. Make no mistake, there's going to be debunks. Every single UAP case or potential UAP case has a debunk. So I just want to make you aware of that. And I want to extend a shout out to Dr. Villarroel. Uh, what you're doing is incredible work. We can't wait for next week's paper. Uh, Dennis already broke the news. Uh, let's hope that it's, if it's startling, let's hope it's not doomy. Uh, I think that whatever it may be, uh, I think humanity can overcome a lot of things. So let's hope it's something more hopeful. <laughs> but whatever it is, we have to be ready, uh, mentally prepared, I think. And I think we are, at least most of us. But let me know what you think about this new preprint from Dr. Villarreal. What do you think about Dennis's news that the actual thing we're all looking for is near next week? And what do you think about uh, this interest and in these 107,000 transients being spotted by Dr. Villarreal around uh, near atmosphere nuclear tests? That's wild. Let me know. Uh, I'll be reading in the comments. If you like the content you see, I'm going to ask you to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That's all you need to do in order to help us. And it is what helps us the most. So thank you. But if you want to support us in any other way, there's a few links down there you can choose from. You can become a member on YouTube or you can support us through KGRA. Anything you choose to do is always appreciated. So thank you. And that's it for me today on this video, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, stay curious and inquisitive like Dr. Beatriz Villarroel. Always. Bye.